In this video, we're talking about difference amplifiers, one of the most useful applications of op amps. Stick around until the end and you'll feel like a pro at op amps in no time. Let's kick things off with a simple example. Picture two containers of water, each at a different temperature. Now, say you want to measure the temperature difference automatically, in real time. How would you pull that off? The first step is easy. Drop a temperature sensor in each container. Each sensor spits out a voltage that tracks the water's temperature. But here's the puzzle. How do we take those two voltages and get just their difference? Sure, you could grab an Arduino, write some code, and let it do the subtraction for you. But honestly, that's overkill. Using a microcontroller for a job this simple is like rolling out a bulldozer just to plant a single flower. It'll work, but most of the power is wasted. There's a much cleaner solution, a difference amplifier. All you need is a basic op-amp chip and a few resistors. That's it. No software, no debugging, no maintenance headaches, just a solid little hardware circuit you can put together for under a dollar. And if op-amps are a brand new territory for you, I recommend checking out our introduction video first. It shows how these chips make analog math surprisingly easy. But for now, let's do a quick refresher. Unlike a resistor, capacitor, or even a transistor, an op-amp isn't just one single part. It's actually a whole circuit built from those building blocks, all packed neatly into one tiny chip. That's why they come as ICs, integrated circuits. But the real magic of an op-amp comes from how you connect it. With just a few resistors, you can make a circuit that literally does math with voltages. You can add them, subtract them, scale them up or down, even integrate or differentiate them. And that's just the beginning. In this video, we'll focus on one of the simplest and most practical tricks, using an op-amp to subtract one voltage from another. And if you're curious about the other things op-amps can pull off, check out our playlist. We've got plenty of examples where these little chips love to show off. Op amps are usually used in one of two modes, open loop or closed loop. In open loop, there's no feedback, so the gain is enormous, hundreds of thousands or more. That's why open loop mode is mainly used in comparators, where the only job is to figure out which input is bigger. We've got a full video on comparators, link in the description. But most real circuits use closed loop with negative feedback through resistors. This feedback reigns in that massive gain, keeps the circuit stable, and makes the op-amp behave in a nice linear way. Closed-loop designs are the backbone of op-amp circuits. Inverting, non-inverting, summers, difference amps, integrators, differentiators, you name it. And in this video, we'll be building our difference amplifier in closed-loop mode. Before we dive into applications, there are two golden rules for analyzing op-amps with negative feedback. They come straight from the ideal op-amp model, and they make circuit analysis so much easier. Rule one, no current flows into the input terminals. In other words, an ideal op-amp has infinite input resistance. Rule two, with negative feedback, the voltages at the inverting and non-inverting inputs are equal. The op-amp constantly drives its output to keep their difference practically zero. These rules only hold when negative feedback is present, but when it is, predicting what the circuit will do becomes surprisingly simple. All right, that's enough of the intro. Now that we've covered the basics, let's dive into the difference amplifier itself. The good news, it's surprisingly easy to build. All you need is an op-amp chip and a few resistors. Power it up, put a feedback resistor from the output back to the inverting input, and connect another resistor from the non-inverting input down to ground. Then feed in your signals. One goes into the inverting input through its resistor, and the other goes into the non-inverting input through its resistor. That's the entire circuit. The output voltage comes out as a weighted difference between the two inputs. And don't worry about the word weighted. If we choose the resistor values carefully, the output becomes simply the difference between the input voltages. Sounds almost too simple, right? Let's prove it by walking through the fundamentals. We'll strip away the fluff and keep only what really matters. In the schematic, we won't bother drawing the dual power rails, just to keep things neat, but remember, they're always there in the real circuit. Here's what we do show. A feedback resistor from the output to the inverting input, 
another resistor tying the non-inverting input to ground, one signal fed into the inverting input through its own resistor, and the other signal fed into the non-inverting input through its own resistor. And that's it. That's the classic difference amplifier, often simply called a subtractor in its simplest form. Let's give the math a clean landing pad by labeling everything. The input voltages are V1 and V2, and the output is V out. We'll set ground as zero volts, handy when we start writing equations. The voltages at the inverting and non-inverting inputs will be V3 and V4. Now for the currents. Through the two input resistors, we'll define I1 and I2. The op amp's input currents are labeled I3 for the inverting input and I4 for the non-inverting input. The feedback resistor carries I5, and the resistor from V4 down to ground carries I6. Great, everything's labeled. Now we can move into the analysis in a few crisp steps. Because this circuit uses negative feedback, the golden rules apply. Rule 1. No current flows into the op amp inputs. That means I3 and I4 are both zero. So, the current coming through resistor R1 has nowhere else to go. It must flow through the feedback path RF. That gives us our first equation. I1 equals I5. On the non-inverting side, the current through resistor R3 also has nowhere else to go except down through the resistor to ground. So I2 equals I6. That's our second equation. Rule 2. With negative feedback, the op amp drives its output so the inverting and non-inverting inputs sit at the same voltage. In other words, V3 equals V4. That's our third equation. With those three rules in place, we can now use Ohm's law to turn currents into voltages and see exactly how the output responds to the inputs. Let's start with equation 1. I1 equals I5. Looking at the circuit, I1 flows through resistor R1, and I5 flows through the feedback resistor, RF. By Ohm's law, each current can be written as the voltage difference across its resistor divided by the resistance. Substituting those expressions into the equation gives us a relationship for V3, the voltage at the inverting input. Now, let's do the same for equation 2. I2 equals I6. Again, watch the resistors the currents flow through. I2 flows through R2, and I6 flows through R3 down to ground. Writing both currents with Ohm's law and substituting them back into the equation gives us an expression for V4, the voltage at the non-inverting input. Now, from equation 3, we know V3 and V4 are equal. So let's take the expressions we found for each and set them equal to one another. At first, the algebra looks a bit messy. Don't stress. Work it step by step and solve for V out. You'll land on a bulky looking expression, the standard difference amplifier formula, and that's exactly what we want. Notice those fractional terms in the formula. Think of them as weights applied to V1 and V2. Let's give them names. Call the non-inverting path's weight A and the inverting path's weight B. Here's the neat part. By changing the resistor values, we can make A and B whatever we want. The circuit is basically a math machine, with resistors acting like tuning knobs that control how much each input counts. So instead of stressing over the messy formula, just picture the difference amp like this. It spits out A times V2 minus B times V1, with the resistor ratios as dials that set the weights. We'll solve a problem with this formula at the end of the video. But before that, let's look at two special cases. First case, suppose the resistor ratios line up so that R1 over RF equals R2 over R3. Let's call that common ratio K. Now, plug K into the standard formula. After a little simplification, you get V out equals 1 over K times the difference of V2 minus V1. And since K itself can be written as RF over R1, this shows us something useful. If we want to amplify the difference between two signals, we just pick resistor values that make those ratios equal. Second case, what if all the resistors are the same value? Then K equals 1, and the whole thing simplifies beautifully. The output is just the clean difference between the two inputs. 
pretty neat, right? So that's the tour of difference amplifiers, also called subtractors. Keep practicing the derivations, not just the results. Do that a few times and you'll feel like a pro. Now let's solve an exam style design problem. We want an op amp circuit whose output is a weighted difference. V out equals three times V2 minus five times V1. That's exactly the AV2 minus BV1 form with A equals three and B equals five. So a difference amplifier is the right tool. Let's start with the standard output for a difference amplifier. It's useful to remember, but you should still be able to derive it from first principles. Our goal is to choose resistor values that produce the required output. In that formula, this part is our A and this part is our B. We want A equals 3, that's our sixth equation, and B equals RF over R1 equals 5, that's our seventh equation. From equation 7, RF equals 5 times R1. Now substitute that into the expression for A. When you solve it, you get R2 equals R3. So the final design rules are simple. RF equals 5 times R1 and R2 equals R3. It's really that easy. Pick convenient values that satisfy those ratios. Choose R1 and R3 first, then compute RF and R2 from the rules. For example, take R1 as 10 kiloohms and R3 as 20 kiloohms. You can pick other values, but it's smart to stay in the practical range of 10 kiloohms to 100 kiloohms. With those choices, RF becomes 5 times R1, so 50 kiloohms, and R2 equals R3, so 20 kiloohms. And that's it. With those resistor values, the circuit's output is exactly 3 times V2 minus 5 times V1. That's the beauty of the difference amplifier, a compact little circuit that gives you the difference between two input voltages in real time. No code, no clocks, just plain physics doing the math. It's tempting to just memorize the final equation, but the real skill comes from being able to derive it step by step. That's what makes you confident when designing or troubleshooting circuits. And if you want to keep exploring, check out our OpImp playlist. We've got plenty more interesting examples lined up. Thank you for watching. If you find this content valuable, you can support us on Patreon. The link is in the description. And don't forget to like and subscribe to ProfMed for more fun and educational videos.